You want to improve your relationship and you know you need support, but you're not quite sure where to start? In this video, I'll show you what kind of issues are usually addressed by coaching versus therapy, how they do their work, what kind of investment they take, and help you choose the right person for you. Let's go. If you're new here, my name is Doris. I'm a certified coach with a master's in psychology and through this channel and in my coaching practice, I help smart romantics build meaningful relationships. The first significant difference between relationship coaching and relationship therapy is their focus. Relationship coaching is designed to help couples or poly configurations who want to improve their communication deepen their intimacy or work on specific aspects of their relationship like setting boundaries, fighting fairer or managing transitions. In contrast, relationship therapy or counseling is more focused on resolving past issues and conflicts and addressing deeper psychological problems that may be affecting the relationship. To help you decide, what is the nature of your issue? If you are seeking guidance to improve your relationship's overall health, satisfaction and intimacy, then relationship coaching might be a good idea. On the other hand, if you are dealing with issues concerning attachment, infidelity, trust or addiction, then relationship therapy may be a more suitable option. Another difference between relationship coaching and relationship therapy is how they work. Relationship coaching is typically more action-oriented, focusing on providing clients with practical tools and techniques they can use to improve their relationship. Clients identify specific goals they want to work on and with their coach, co-create a plan to achieve them. In my practice, we do that by raising self and partner awareness and future-focused skill building. So there's exercises and homework between sessions. In contrast, relationship therapy is often more introspective and focused on exploring the underlying emotional and psychological issues. This is more of a medical model where therapists treat patients using techniques like cognitive behavioral therapy or psychodynamic therapy to bring up family of origin issues and patterns we've internalized as children that may be affecting the relationship today. Obviously, there's also the question of time and cost investment, which, disclaimer, depends on the nature of the issue you're working on and where you're located. Generally speaking, coaching tends to be more affordable and of a shorter duration because you're working on specific well-defined goals. So you know when you've reached them. Many coaches offer a set amount of sessions, so you know what the investment is going to be at the start. For therapy or counseling, at least in the US, access to mental health care providers can be challenging since many opt out of existing insurance plans. So you may have to wait a few months to find someone who's available that accepts your insurance, or you pay out of pocket, which can be quite prohibitive. For example, a 50 minute session in New York City easily costs from $300 upwards and depending on how deep you dig into your past treatment can stretch over a long period of time. Having said that, if you have the time and money, there are absolutely cases where coaching and therapy can complement one another. Since they are operating differently, doing both might be the right answer for you. Something both have in common is that therapists and coaches are required to maintain strict confidentiality. Therapists tend to fall under a medical umbrella with you as their patient, so some additional legal privileges may apply. However, if you are disclosing information that suggests illegal activities or that cause a legitimate concern for your immediate safety or that of others, coaches and therapists have a duty of care to share that information with the local authorities. With this information, you can start researching and interviewing coaches and therapists who practice near you. My recommendation is to talk to at least three people because honestly, Loads of available research evidence shows that the most important indicator for a successful coaching or therapeutic intervention is the bond of trust between you and your service provider. If you and your partner or your polycule are seeking support together, all parties should sign off and feel comfortable to give you the best chance of success. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments below and watch this video next to learn more.